Welcome to Seattle Maritime Matters. Hi, I'm Ken Saunderson with the Seattle Propeller Club. And today I'm with Peter Schrappen, who is the Vice President of the Pacific Coast Region for the American Waterways Operators. Thanks for joining us today, Peter. Hey, Ken, it's great to see you again. Hey, Peter, why don't we start off by having you explain a little bit about what the American Waterways Operators are all about. Sure, AWO is the tugboat, towboat and barge industries advocate, resource, united voice for safe, sustainable and efficient transportation on America's waterways oceans and coasts. So I have the pleasure of working with AWO. We've been around for 79 years. We have over 300 member businesses within that tugboat, towboat and barge industry, all um, the US flag portion of that industry. And uh, I've been with AWO for about 15 months. Well, congratulations again on that appointment. As the Pacific Coast Region Director, what do you do for the AWO? So my title is Vice President for the Pacific Region. There are 32 member businesses that are uh, located on the Pacific, in the Pacific region. And that's Hawaii, Guam, American Samoa, Alaska, Washington State, Oregon, and California. So I serve as the liaison between our member businesses, regulators, lawmakers at the city, state, and federal levels. And I know you're involved with a tremendous number of different initiatives nationally, as well as on the West Coast. Talk a little bit about some of the priorities that you have for the coming year, Peter. Well, there's no shortage of, of issues that I'm working on. Um, and I'll just start with Washington State. We're really pleased that we got a pro Jones Act resolution passed this year with the support of the uh, Senate, Senator Karen Kaiser. And then the House will be working on that, that priority next year when the legislature starts in early January 2024. And Representative Julia Reed hopefully will be spearheading that effort. Also in Washington State, there's the no discharge zone, which takes effect in May of 2023. So right around the corner. So we're working on securing some, some budget dollars from the Washington State Legislature to, um, to, to fund pump outs in Puget Sound. So that's a big deal for us. Moving, moving a little further south on the uh, Columbian Snake River, we really are keen on protecting the, the Snake River dams. We see that as one system with the Columbia River over, um, you know, our industry moves so much cargo on the Snake River that we just see that as such a big priority to speak up for the dams. And then um, ending in California on this tour, Ken, uh, working in California, we are concerned about the commercial harbor craft rule that passed, uh, just took effect in January of 2023. So trying to work with the California legislature to add some reasonableness to those really stringent timelines that affect air emissions that come out of our member business, tugs and towboats and barges. You sure have a tremendous amount on your plate, Peter. Um, talk a little bit about the tug and barge industry itself. It is such a critical and important role, not only in Puget Sound, but globally. Talk a little bit about that and its impact on the country and our economy. I'm really proud that our industry safely and efficiently moves over 665 million tons of cargo each year, including more than 60% of U.S. export grain and significant bulk container and containerized cargoes uh, along the Pacific coast. And not only that, just how, how green we are. We produce less greenhouse gases than other modes. Rail emits 43% more, and trucks, get this, Ken, emit 832% more greenhouse gases than our industry. Um, so we reduce congestion, we do it safely, and we're a vital part of our American economy. That's such a great story, too. And your members that individually have an incredible commitment to environmental stewardship and sustainability. Talk a little bit about that. It's an important role in, in their value system and within AWO. Well, we are very pleased that we are such a green industry, but we are definitely not pressing pause on our innovation. We are early adopters of innovation. I'll just cite an example. Crowley's E-Wolf is under production right now. That's going to be a zero emission tug. That'll be home ported at the Port of San Diego. That's just one example. We are so, uh, I didn't mention wind energy earlier. We see that as the biggest uh, business opportunity for our members in decades. The vessels that are moving the turbines back and forth from the coast, uh, from land to the coast have to be US flagged. So uh, that is such a big business opportunity for uh, to address President Biden's very rather ambitious goals to make our country even greener. You know, I've been around the industry as you have been for a number of years, and I always love to see your passion for uh, the maritime industry. Tell me why you're so excited about the future of the industry. Gosh, well, you know, it's there's just a beautiful thread throughout our country's past around maritime, around our country's present and our regional present tense of uh, of where we are right now with, with our economy around maritime. And then when I look to the future, it's all maritime all the time. So 
it's it's it really threads itself like a, a beautiful quilt. Uh, and you can look at maritime. I and mean, you talk to mariners, Ken, and you know what it's like. You talk to mariners, and it's such a religious experience to talk with mariners about being on the water, and it's contagious. So while I did not grow up in the water, I grew up in the suburbs of St. Louis. I grew up near the water, the Mississippi River, of course. And uh, to be actually in that industry is really exhilarating. 